Why is the subcarrier spacing bigger in 5G mobile communications compared to 4G? Well, here we have a representation of an OFDM symbol. There's a cyclic prefix and, or sometimes a guard period. And then there's a period of time where data is sent in parallel frequency subchannels. And that's sometimes called subcarriers. Now let's try to understand this in terms of the spacing between those subcarriers. In each subcarrier, a symbol is sent for the entire period of this amount of time. So let's think of that subcarrier, just one subcarrier. So the symbol is sent for that entire amount of time. Let's call that capital T. That's this full amount of time. And then in the frequency domain, we can look at the Fourier transform, and that is a sync function where this distance here, this frequency here, is that length of frequency is one divided by T. So the carrier spacing is one divided by T, where T is this spacing. Why is it the carrier spacing? Because in OFDM, you can put orthogonal carriers. And so the orthogonal carrier can be spaced exactly at this separation. So let's now think about what affects that amount of time. So one thing that affects it is Doppler. And in 5G, we're using higher frequency bands, including millimeter wave communications, and the Doppler is worse. So that is the reason for the subcarrier spacings being bigger. Let's try to understand that. Okay, so here's Doppler, and here's the formula for the maximum Doppler. It'll be either a positive or a negative shift, depending on the path directions relative to the user. Uh, and the maximum shift is given by the carrier frequency, FC, times the ratio of the velocity of the moving vehicle divided by the speed of light. And so this C here is the speed of light. Uh, this C here is for the carrier. And for more videos on this, check out the description below this video. So the Doppler depends directly on the carrier frequency. So let's look at some examples. Let's say we were going uh, at a speed of 100 kilometers an hour on a highway, for example. Well, this corresponds to 27.8 meters per second. And let's look at the 4G system where the carrier frequency is around about typically two gigahertz. So with these two numbers in this formula, it gives us a Doppler, maximum Doppler shift of 0.19 kilohertz. And in the 4G standard, the subchannels are 15 kilohertz apart. So this is the spacing of the subcarriers is 15 kilohertz. And so this Doppler shift corresponds to 1.2% of one of those subchannels. So what that means is if we look at this picture here, they're going, these subchannels are going to be spread out by an extra 1.2% beyond the one divided by capital T. So in the case of 4G in these scenarios here, 1.2% is not very much. Let's think about 5G. And in 5G, we're using higher carrier frequencies six gigahertz and potentially 28 gigahertz. So let's look at in those two cases, we're just with these numbers, six gigahertz would give you 0.5 kilohertz of, um, of Doppler spread, uh, and 28 gigahertz would give you 2.6 kilohertz of Doppler spread. Well, this would be 17% of a 15 kilohertz subcarrier spacing. So if we kept the same subcarrier spacing as in 4G, then if we tried to use that at 28 gigahertz, we'd have 17% of Doppler spread. So the width of this, uh, of an individual subcarrier will be spread out by an extra almost 20%. Now, it doesn't change the location of these uh, subcarriers because they're spaced apart given by this. Um, so, but you've got an extra 20% uh, and they're not even gonna be sync functions once they've been spread. Uh, but they're going to cause intercarrier interference. That's what we call intercarrier interference, ICI. Now we can think about what would happen is this directly is the incentive to have wider subcarrier spacing. So if these uh, sync functions were wider, uh, then the percentage would be much less. So if we used, for example, 480 kilohertz of spacing, uh, then we would only have 0.5% 
of the overlap from the Doppler spread. And so this is actually one of the maximum uh, spacings that's uh, allowed in the 5G standard. The 5G standard still has 15 kilohertz as one option because when it's 5G is operating at the lower carrier frequencies like two gigahertz, you still want to be doing a, an efficient implementation. But if you're going to be using also the higher frequencies, you need to have an option of a bigger carrier spacing. And that's what's in the 5G standard. So let's think of some of the implications of this. Uh, when you've got a wider carrier spacing and wider carriers, then you've got less subcarriers. So that means less data channels. That's okay because each of those subchannels is wider, so you can have a higher data rate in each subchannel. But the problem is you're going to have some intersymbol interfer intercarrier interference, and you do need to be able to account for that. Another thing is that when you have wider subcarriers, that means one on T is bigger, that means T is smaller. So that means your OFDM symbol is shorter. And then you've got a worse ratio of the cyclic prefix time to the data time. And so you're going to be spending less percentage of overall time sending data. Uh, and so that's something that you need to factor in as an engineering trade-off. Another thing you could do, actually, instead of using wider subcarriers, is you could use the same subcarriers, but only put data in every second subcarrier. The problem with that, of course, would be that you're going to be only able to send at half the data rate. Another thing you could do is you could put them in every second subcarrier and actually make the subcarrier spacing smaller. That would enable you to then have more subcarriers, but still you wouldn't get enough uh, in comparison to having the wider subcarriers and then putting up with the intercarrier interference and managing the intercarrier interference. Uh, another problem with having uh, narrower subchannels and only putting data every second one is that you, because they're narrower, you would have more samples in your symbol, and that means you would need a larger fast Fourier transform to do the implementation of the OFDM. And that means more computation power and it means a shorter battery life for your device. And one final thing to say is also with 5G, there is uh, plans for having 5G delivered over low Earth orbit satellite services. And in that case, the velocity would be increasing quite significantly because those satellites are traveling very quickly, which means that the Doppler spread is going to be even bigger. And that's another incentive for having such wide subcarriers. So if this video has helped you, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the web page in the description below where there's a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.